Hey guys, I'm Alastair from Trail and Kale, the website designed to help you run your best. Whether that's through our three training plans, running 101 advice, or running shoe reviews just like this. Today I am reviewing the Kraft Nordlite Speed running shoes. That's these guys here. Really quickly then, what makes these running shoes so special? Um, well, there's a few key points to note on these shoes. Firstly, they're using the CR foam from Kraft, which is, has amazing energy return and very good durability as well. Uh, it also has a carbon plate, which you can see here. Um, so that's really good for energy return, helps you run faster too. And it's got a one piece engineered mesh upper, um, which is good and also bad, I'll go into that in just a second. Now, who's this running shoe for? It's definitely for someone who wants to run fast. Uh, you can also run on very, very light trails with these running shoes. Um, I wouldn't recommend going on anything technical just because the outsole will not handle that at all. But rolling buffed hard packed trails, maybe very dry forest trails as well, then this could be a really good race day trail shoe for you. But Mainly it's gonna be for speed work and as a race day shoe for road running. Really quickly going over some of the key details of this running shoe then. It is $220 from craftsports.us. The shoe does fit true to size. Um, the website, the US one, does recommend sizing up a half size, but in my experience, I've just went with my usual size uh, and it fits perfectly for me. It has a medium fit in the width as well, so yeah, if you have average size feet, go with the usual sizing. It weighs 9.2 ounces or 216 grams if you're a grams lover. Um, that's not hugely lightweight for such a fast, uh, responsive race day shoe um, with a carbon plate. I'd expect that to be a little bit lighter, um, but still not heavy at all. The toe box, like I said before, it's very much a medium fit shoe. So the toe box is also medium fit as well. There is a nice bit of roominess and airiness thanks to the one piece upper that kind of just gives you that extra space. The drop from the heel to the toe is six millimeters. So that feels really good. Uh, I really like six millimeter drop on many other shoes that I wear, mostly from Hoka and on. Uh, six millimeter just works really well for me. It's a pretty stable shoe thanks to that carbon fiber plate that runs through the midsole, but also it has a fairly wide um, outsole footprint as well. So this part here is very wide, as you can see, kind of extends past the upper here. Hopefully you can see that anyway. Um, so that gives the shoe some good stability when you're running. Some competitor shoes or alternative shoes to this one right now would probably, I'd say, be the Hoka Rocket X2, maybe the On Cloud Boom Echo 3, or the Socony Endorphin Pro 3. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump straight into the features that I really like about this running shoe, and then after that, I'll go into some of the things that I feel need some improvements. The first thing, which is probably the most noticeable good point about these running shoes, is really the midsole and also the carbon plate. It kind of works really well with that midsole foam, which is the CR foam that I mentioned before. So this is a CTM running shoe, which means craft tailored motion. That basically means that's the best of the best uh, materials and design aspects that are going into the shoe. So it's the top of the line running shoe. Um, so that means there's gonna be some very cool innovative and really effective materials in this running shoe that will actually help you run faster. So like I said before, that is the midsole. And the CR foam has really good energy response and energy return, and I'm noticing it really hold up very well in durability as well. So over run after run after run, I'm not seeing a huge amount of creasing or um, compression or lost kind of spring from this foam. So it's holding up really well. And I feel like that's gonna last for quite a long time too. Um, as I said before, there is a carbon fiber plate, which you can see here. I really like how that's exposed. So you can see there is a carbon plate there. And it is also split within a shoe. You can't see that, but the plate is split 
which means there is some flex to that um, rigid plate as well. So it feels really good. There's also a rocker in the midsole, as you can see from the, it's kind of a four foot rocker mostly. There's not a huge amount at the rear. But what that does with the carbon plate is it really just makes you want to move forward. It feels really good, very propulsive, and it just feels very efficient when you're running longer distances and you just want to keep running. And that shoe really helps with that feeling. It just makes you want to keep going. So I really like what they've done. They've combined the midsole and carbon fiber plate along with that rocker really well. Feels great. That's my favorite thing about this shoe. The second thing that I really like is the one piece upper. So it is super breathable, super durable. You can hear it's kind of a plasticky material. So there's no stretch in this upper, um, but it is super flexible. Um, so it does wrap around your feet very nicely. Uh, I kind of like the look of it as well. It's two layers. You've got this plasticky, durable external layer. If I put my fingers in there, you should be able to see them wiggling. But there is actually another softer layer on the inside. And that obviously protects your toes um, it stops any rubbing and makes it nice, soft and comfortable inside the shoe. So yeah, I really like it. Lacing system works very well, pretty traditional. Very thin materials. Look how thin that tongue is. Hardly anything to it, but there is some padding so you don't feel the laces on top of your feet. Very thin around the collar as well, as you can see here. And the heel counter. But it's not all rainbows with the upper, and the upper for me really is a double-edged sword because I do really like it, but there are certainly some things that need improvement. And to me, that's really the only area of this shoe that does need improvement. Apart from the weight, I feel like it could be reduced. I think most of that weight is coming from the midsole foam, possibly. Maybe helps with the durability, maybe. So the first one being, around the heel counter on the inside, hopefully you can see, there is this padded section around here. See, I'm compressing it there. Now, I see a few shoes using this um, kind of feature to try and lock your heel into place, all the while not needing to have a thick kind of collar or heel counter, because you can reduce the amount of weight if you don't have to have all this padding all the way around. So Kraft has put this kind of little I'm not sure what you would call it, kind of an extruded bumper around the heel counter and wraps around the collar a little bit as well. Designed to keep your foot in place, but it rubs on your Achilles um, because there's that kind of area of pressure that's inevitably going to be rubbing on your foot somewhere. Um, so I do feel that on my Achilles, I don't really like it. Uh, there is also stitching on the inside here. So if you do wear no-show socks, this stitching is actually quite, it's quite hard. Although I myself didn't feel any rubbing from this stitching, um, I don't wear no-show socks. Uh, I have read, some people who have bought this shoe, I think have felt some rubbing from that stitching. So just to be aware if you do wear uh, socks that are no-show, you know, it doesn't have the side of a sock going up to your ankle, for example, and then you might feel that rubbing. The second thing is it's such a pain to put on. Um, I know that sounds really silly, but the upper, because it's so kind of lightweight and flexible, it kind of just collapses in on itself as you're sliding your shoe in, or your foot in, sorry. Um, so, that is a little bummer. You will have to undo the lace system a lot more than you usually would, just so you can easily slide your, your foot in. Um, but yeah, it's also, it's kind of got this grippy material on the inside. It's almost like a suede, but it grips your sock as you put your foot in um, and because the upper is just so lightweight, it just collapses in and it takes a little bit longer to get the shoe on. Pain in the butt, um, but once it's on, feels great, super comfortable. So for a running shoe that's over $200, I'd expect it to be completely comfortable and not have any rubbing issues. So I'm a little bit disappointed that this kind of heel counter padding does put pressure on the Achilles. 
Uh, some people won't notice that. I do have a little bit of a, a delicate Achilles. Um, so I do feel any pressure that's there. So I just tend to avoid any shoes that does that because I don't really want to get Achilles tendonitis again. And I know something like this would probably bring it on. So anyone who has a, a much tougher Achilles you probably won't even notice that, but something to be aware of if you do. So $220, what do you really get? I mean, it is a high performance running shoe. There's no denying that, no getting around it. Super fast. I've run some of my fastest 5Ks in these shoes lately. Um, feels very comfortable apart from that bit at the back there. Um, just love the energy return from this CR foam on it um, and the carbon fiber plate. It just, it's super propulsive. It's like it's doing the work for me. Um, and then anything over 10 kilometers running in these shoes, you start to feel the efficiency gains of having a foam like this uh, with a carbon plate and a rocker. Um, it just it just really helps with your stride and your foot tick over or your cadence. It's it just it's something you have to feel to believe. So yes, two hundred and twenty dollars. You could probably step up for maybe thirty more dollars, get into the super shoe range of the Hoka Rocket X Two or the um, On Cloud Boom Echo Three, for example and get a more comfortable shoe with arguably more performance out of that shoe as well. So $30 more for a $250 shoe is about 15% more in cost. Um, so you've really got to weigh up whether that cost is worth it for you. Anyway, definitely go check out my reviews of the Hoka X2 and also the on Cloud Boom Echo 3, all very similar shoes, which you might want to also check out. So just to reiterate then, it's very much a shoe for someone who wants to do speed work as quickly as possible, and they want to have a race day shoe. So a shoe that can do two of those things really well, um, that would be the Kraft Nordlight Speed. So if that sounds like you, and you don't want to go into that $250 range um, to buy a pair of shoes, which is actually quite expensive, um, then this shoe is going to be for you. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. That breathable one piece upper is great. Once you get the shoes on, feels very comfortable. So super high performance running shoe with a couple of comfort issues at the back here. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this view. If you did, please give it a like, share it with a friend and consider subscribing to our channel for more running shoe reviews just like this one. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.